Hello, this is Leidmar Lopes. I'm your professor of Introduction to the New Testament. And today we will dive into the introduction to the book of Romans. As I mentioned before, we did a introduction to the epistles, but now I want to just to walk you through some of uh, facts uh, about the book of Romans or the epistle of or to Romans, if you may. Uh, but first of all, I would love to uh, present to you some suggestions about uh, literature. Yes, I have mentioned to you about uh, Paul's life, about uh, introduction to the New Testament, if you want to really uh, dive into the studies of uh, uh, the apostles, uh, we have this book by Lockyer, uh, published by Zondervan, uh, All the Apostles of uh, the Bible. It's very good. Okay, you can uh, have that, Amazon.com. <laughs> And uh, this is in Portuguese, but uh, I have another copy in English also by F.F. F. Bruce. is one of our uh, very good uh, commentators. Uh, the book of Romans or uh, introduction and commentary. He goes chapter by chapter, verse by verse, making a expositive commentary about it okay if you want a inductive bible studies in romans you have this book by warren veers uh, be right is a very very nice very deep uh bible study in the book of romans uh you have uh, william barclay uh this Commentary is a pearl, is gold, if I may, uh, if you want to access that also. Um, they are not publishing that anymore, uh, but you might find this someplace. Uh, and by use, is one of the best Bible commentaries in the, the book of Romans. And uh, if you want to have an expository uh, outline, of every single book of the New Testament, including the book of Romans, you have this Vir's expository outline on the New Testament, Warren Vir's. Why I'm showing this to you? Because if you will really take serious your studies of the, the Bible, you have first the Bible. <laughs> uh, you can study, you can understand the Bible uh, with the Bible. And you cannot understand the Bible without the Bible. So you have to read the Bible. You have to dive into the Bible to read. First, you read intellectually. First, secondly, you read uh, searching or researching. You do a research. And third, you read devotionally and allowing the Bible to imprint or, or to do something in your life, to change your life, like the Apostle Paul. He allowed God change his life completely. So, Introduction to the book of Romans. We have this first epistle. Okay. And uh, let's check here uh, and let's walk in you into the book of Romans. Introduction to the epistle of Romans. I, I, I want you to clarify you with this. Those studies that we are into and the other classes that you have. You might have some 
Bible studies. You might have some devotional classes. This class, uh, it's not a intent to be a, a devotional class, but even though we have and we can allow ourselves to uh, dive into, into a point that the Word of God will make sense not only intellectually, but will make sense spiritually and will change our lives. And my challenge here is try to balance as much as possible uh, the studies of each one of the books. Of course, it's just an introduction. We will not be able because the class or the course, it's not for us to study verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Remember, it's just an introduction to uh, inspire, uh, to encourage you to study and dive into. Yes, you will have another, other classes where we will be able to study more uh, in depth, verse by verse and chapter by chapter which is not this case now, is an introduction to the epistle of the, to the Romans. Okay. Uh, we have a key point here for us to understand. Reminding you, the slides, they are just a slides, which is very, very, very small portion, if I might say, of what you have on your uh, study guide, okay? So key point, from the beginning, Romans is a Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, and is being a letter is much than a letter, it is a theological uh, trestite, okay? It is a theological uh, text is a theological uh, positioning of uh, the Christendom. Described as the greatest companion of theology in the New Testament. Yes, one of the books in the New Testament that has been studied more uh, besides the Gospels, okay, you have to point this out, Beside the Gospels is the book of Romans. Why? This, because of the substantiality of the theological content that we have in that book. So, saying that, it's very important and key for us to understand. And I brought out here some of the theologians, some of the uh, scholars, if you may, that uh, have something to say about that. John Murray, he stated that the book of Romans is an exposition and defense of the gospel of grace. John Stott, this guy is awesome. Everything, all of these guys, I'm mentioning everything you find, it, you, you can buy it, okay? John Stott considered Romans as a kind of Christian manifesto. F.F. F. Bruce, which I recommended you, his book, uh, Introduction and Commentary of the Book of Romans, he states that and refers to Romans as the Gospel according Paul. Guilherme Orr, he approached to Romans as doctrinally. Uh, Romans is the greatest book ever written. Yes, I want to encourage you, if you have not yet, read all the book of Romans. Trust me, you will read once, twice, three times, and you're going to read again. It's an awesome content, it's an awesome book, kind of a cemented, you know, theologically and uh, uh, doctrinally, 
uh, our faith, our beliefs. Francis Schaeffer, historically, he studied in American Law School for Argumentation. Francis Schaeffer, he looked at the book of Romans as a kind of a, you are studying in a law school because you will find in the book of Romans everything that we need pointed out, very well curved, very well designed for us to live and outlive, okay? Uh, yes, let's move forward. The content and importance of the book, okay? Uh, length and magnificence. Uh, the longest letter by Apostle Paul, highly regarded by many. As I mentioned before, I brought here uh, those uh, scholars how they approach to the content of the book of Romans. Uh, this book is not only the longest, but uh, is very well recognized by the academia, by the uh, scholars, uh, and also by the church today. Uh, doctrine of justification. You will find all the doctrine of justification in that book, complete explanation of justification by faith in Jesus Christ, by, by obedience to the Mosaic law. He makes that clear. Remember that uh, in the book of Acts, the Luke, he shows how God wants to reach out to other uh, ethnic groups to the Gentile community. And Paul has this revelation about the doctrine of justification. Hey, we are justified only by faith in Jesus Christ. Not anything else, not the law, not anything that we might do, not sacrifice that we might do, because he already did the sacrifice that we need. Okay? Yeah, uh, we are not here to discuss and to study theologically uh, the doctrine of justification, but for you to understand that the book of Romans is pave the base for the doctrine of justification. And we have also a huge amount of teachings on salvation. Explores, explores various doctrines of salvation and their practical applications. Christianity is about salvation. Salvation from what? Salvation in what? Who can save us? Paul explores everything in the book of Romans. This is a very key book and this is a very important for us. The atonement and hope. Studying Romans enhances understanding of Jesus Christ's atonement, offering peace and hope to all. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is here to offer us peace and hope. And Paul works that perfectly and helps us. Hey remember on the on this side you have the Portuguese version Okay, of everything I'm saying here. Okay. Uh, the background and context of the book. Probable location. Written in Corinth. Brought to Rome by Phoebe or Phoebe from Sincrea. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe was a guy, he was a disciple, and he brought that book to Rome. Okay. And uh, he wrote in Corinth, remember when I was telling you uh, about uh, Paul's bi biography that he went to Corinth and he stood that more time, a couple of years, yeah, is from where he wrote it, the book of Romans. Connections to Corinth uh, hosted by Gaius during reading, doing, doing writing, I'm sorry. 
uh, hosted by Gaius during writing, Erastus, uh, the city's treasurer, likely from Corinth. Okay. Uh, early Christians community in Rome, Christianity possibly planted by individuals present prison in uh, Pentecost. Do you remember in Acts chapter uh, 2, we have uh, in the midst of the, the Pentecost feast that the Holy Spirit feel a place baptizing the disciples and they spoke in different languages. Uh, 16 languages were understood in that day about the the great things of God, about this, about salvation. And in those occasions of the, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, which is in, uh, is part of the, the Feast of Tabernacles, in those feasts, people from all over the world came, used to come to Jerusalem for uh, the feast, and they heard, uh, seems like they st- Studies pointed out that most likely those the Christians that were in Rome, they were uh, presented in the days of Pentecost and the Feast of Pentecost, and they they heard, they learned in those days about Jesus Christ, accepting Christ. They went back to Rome because we have no record of who planted the church in. Rome, most like, was these people that were there present at the day uh, of the descent uh, of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples in Jerusalem. Well, let's move forward. As a background, Jewish influence, uh, presence of Jews in Rome facilitated, f- facilitated, and uh, with Jesus' teaching, okay? They were familiar with uh, the teachings of Jesus uh, back then. Formation of Christian community, as I mentioned to you, evidence of a diverse Christian community in Rome with multiple meetings places. Back then, they have a multiple places that they come together to praise, to learn, to study, the word of God, and to preach and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, back then we did not have this in hand, but they have, they learned about Jesus Christ. The uh, All the teachings of Jesus Christ were very fresh into their minds. Okay, So the background for the book of Romans, uh, uh, Corinth was probably the, Probably the location, uh, uh, strong connection with Corinth, uh, the early Christian community in Rome. Uh, and uh, moving forward, the authorship, we don't have to discuss much. We don't have much to discuss here. Romans chapter 1, verse 1, attributes the authorship to the Apostle Paul. Transcription, Romans sixteen twenty two mentions uh, Tertius. Uh, as the scribe who transcribed Paul's words uh, and Paul's uh, role, uh, despite the use of uh, a scribe, Paul is recognized as the primary author of the epistle to the Romans. He received the revelation, the inspiration, the perspiration, and he uh, spoke uh, and uh, he has a scribe that helped him. But the authorship is Paul's. Dating of the epistle. Okay, the epistle uh, was likely written between 55 and 58. I have to remind you, uh, we cannot assure the dates. Even though we have material, even though we have the content we have history uh, on our side but there's no way to assure that oh it was a march of uh, 55 AD no no there's no way to do that okay
Okay, and uh, but most likely uh, the academia and uh, the canon of the church uh, they pointed out uh, most likely to a date between 55 and 58. And uh, also, uh, I pointed out some contextual clues written during Paul's preparation to travel to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Yeah. Prior to go to Jerusalem, he wants that this letter to get to Rome. While he were going to Jerusalem, the letter would be going to Rome. So most likely were uh, in the same period of time of preparation for this travel. And, and remember, uh, he went to Jerusalem and to, to take a part in the concile uh, in, in Jerusalem, to a meeting in Jerusalem with the, the disciples, with the leaders of the church. And he already had written Romans. So he will prepare to get to Jerusalem and sit with uh, our with the, his brothers in uh, in Christ and to discuss uh, uh, about uh, the teachings and uh, uh, understand uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ and how they would be uh, spreading that message. Uh, Winter before last visit to Greece aligns with uh, Acts chapter 19, 20. Uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 16 indicated earlier 58. So, see, between 55 and 58, as much as we can uh, study it. Uh, and we have a clue. And uh, once you look to the, to the indications uh, of Acts in 1 Corinthians, uh, where he mentioned you know, the, the winter that, uh, for the last visit uh, to Greece uh, pointed out that the last visit to Greece uh, were approximately of the early 58 uh, AD as a probable date. Okay. Uh, recipients, members of the church in Rome. Who were the recipients? To whom he wrote it? You know, uh, to the members of the church in Rome. Uh, origin of the church are, is uncertain. We already mentioned that. Uh, we don't know who planted that church, but we have a clue. We have an idea that Christian, that, that people that came for the the feast of the Pentecost were right there, and they heard. Uh, about the teachings of Jesus Christ. They accept Christ. They understood the message. They went back and they started uh, the church and they start to uh, be connected. And uh, so most likely uh, in that time of the Pentecost, uh, people from Rome, Jews that came to celebrate, they accept Christ and bring the message to Rome. Uh, a specific reading sent to individuals known by Paul, such as Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, we have, uh, he mentioned this, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, so they were also uh, recipients of uh, that letter. Uh, and uh, they used the letter to spread uh, the message of Christianity uh, in a format. And now with uh, more understanding, and uh, with the principles and guidance, okay, how they would practice their faith and their Christianity. Uh, the purpose of this uh, epistle, uh, as we already uh, mentioned, uh, is an explanation of gospel doctrines. Once you read the, the gospels, you see many doctrines there. And that those doctrines, they, some of some of them were new, some of them were part of uh, the law, uh, but uh, Paul took time to explain, to draw uh, 
the doctrines uh, of the Gospels. Written by Paul to explain the fundamental doctrines of, of the Gospels, systematic exposition of the Gospel applicable uh, to both Jews and Gentiles. And he makes sure that the application okay, uh, of the Gospel, uh, of the, the teaching, is for Jews and Gentiles. Okay, it's not that. Now we're going to have a gospel just for the Gentiles. We're going to have a special gospel for the Jews. No, it's the same gospel for both, for all men. And Paul will mention that. Argumentative approach addressing Gentiles while appealing to Jews. Okay? He is preaching to the Gentiles with their many goddesses, many spiritual goddess and he is addressing to these people and appealing to the Jews and bringing them together because the gospel and, and the uh, the good news is for all not only for some uh Reasons to or for sending the epistle. First, preparation for Paul's visit to Rome. Remember, uh, Paul has expressed himself the desire to go and visit with them and stay with them, making that there in Rome maybe the base for uh, his uh, mission trip to uh, Spain and uh, uh, Lusitania, uh, which is Portugal. So we have to remember this. You know, preparation for Paul's visit is one of the reasons. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. And. The second reason uh, is uh, clarification and defense of teachings, okay? Uh, opposition, he faced opposition, okay, due to misunderstanding or uh, distortion of Paul's teaching, okay? We will see this in Acts chapter 13, Romans 3, and second and Peter also. Uh, we will learn that uh, Paul wrote it. Uh, to clarify and defend his teachings. Uh, third, uh, to promote or promotion of unity among Jews and Gentiles, Gentile members. Yeah, Paul were very concerned about you know that the situation that might be coming or arriving within the community of the saints, and he needs to address the unity uh, among Jews and the, the Gentiles. So this is one of the reasons, okay? Uh, let's move forward. Uh, Paul shows an, uh, ex his excitement and intentions in this letter, okay? Paul eagerly anticipated ministering in the Roman church. Romans chapter 1, 8 to 15, we learn how excited he is and how committed he is to come to Rome and preach to the church there. Uh, letter written from Cor Corinth uh, before Paul's journey to Jerusalem to deliver offerings to the poor. Uh, original plan to visit Rome and then Spain interrupted by his arrest in Jerusalem, eventually reached Rome as a prisoner okay remember he went to he wrote it romans sent the letter to romans and he went to jerusalem why in jerusalem they arrested him and they then sent him to rome but now not and received them receive him there now not as a preacher but as a, a prisoner in rome Okay, uh, the structure of the epistle, we have an introduction there, uh, doctrine in the first chapter, 
doctrine of justification by faith to Romans chapter 1 up to uh, chapter 11, uh, practical uh, extortions, uh, Paul's excitement and uh, intentions. Uh, I present here how excited and intentional Paul is on the chapter 1 of Romans to go and visit with the church in Rome. But remember, uh, he wrote the book of uh, Romans. He sent the book to Rome, and he went to Jerusalem to meet with the brothers, leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And then you were arrested in Jerusalem, and he reached then Rome, but now as not as a as a preacher, but now as a, a prisoner. Uh, he went to Rome in a very different format that you were expecting to. Uh, so the uh, structure of the epistle uh, is an uh, uh, introduction. We have the introduction there. We have uh, the doc doctrine of justification, practical exhortation, and conclusion with personal greetings, explanation, blessings. Uh, 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 we finish in the, the, so in the chapter 15 and 16. Uh, the uh, epistle of Romans. Okay, now we see the themes and the divisions of Romans. Okay, four sections of the epistle: necessary righteousness, prov provided righteousness, vindica vindicated righteousness, and practice righteousness. Paul shows. Uh, these four sections to study and explain uh, what he means and what the gospel means by righteousness. Okay, the central theme is righteousness. Okay, Paul emphasizes the concept of righteousness through the letter. Throughout the letter, you will learn, you will see, you read about righteousness, salvation by grace, through faith in Christ, imputed righteousness. There's nothing can save us. There's nothing we can do to save our own selves. The only thing that can save us is the God's righteousness through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Yes, themes and divisions of Romans is still testamentary nature. Sunday's uh, description describes Romans as a testamentary. What do, you, what, do you, what do he mean about that? That seems like the Apostle Paul uh, wrote uh, the Romans theologically and uh, in a very testamentary format or like expressing his deepest desire that the Christians would live like that. His last desire. And uh, Burton's description uh, about Romans is, he describes Romans as a uh, prophylactic uh, or prophylactic. Paul's desire to protect against false teachings. I mean, uh, prophylactic is something that will cure, that will protect you from any illness. So basically, Paul wrote this Roman uh, epistle uh, in order to present a prophylactic answer to the uh, disease or to some teachings, false teachings uh, in the midst of the community of the faith. Okay? And also reinforcing Christian doctrine of defense uh, against erroneous ideas. Okay. Themes and divisions of Romans is still uh, a testamentary nature. We already um, bounced there. Uh, most important key: the doctrinal uh, foundations. Okay, for the for the uh, doctrinal foundation. Paul's epistle to Romans, a theological trustize, okay? You see, you will see a lot 
of a theology in Paul's uh, letter to the Romans. Greatest companion of theology in the New Testament deals with deepest themes of Christianity. Listen, the Gospels started and bring about it. Uh, all the outlined uh, or outlined uh, ways of the Christianity uh, and the ways of how the Christians should live. And, uh, uh, and Paul, he immersed himself and he created a structure. He, if I might say, he structurized the themes of Christianity. Uh, highlighted, exp let me show you. I'm, you have this on your study guide, but uh, I just give you this highlight excerpt. Paul climbed to lofty heights and reached the pinnacle of Christian theology. Okay. There's no way for you to study theology, Christian theology, without diving into the book of Romans. Okay, Romans opens up a perspective through which the entire landscape of the Bible can be seen. Okay, let's move forward. And the spiritual value of the epistle, you might ask, well, is it theological? Is it a defense of the of faith, a defense against uh, uh, any false uh, teachings, but um, what's the spiritual uh, value of the person? Spiritual renewal that renew you. Most important key points on this is the influence of Romans through church history, impact on uh, prominent church leaders' role in spiritual revivals. Listen. If you read the book of Romans, and if you are not, you know, passionate about, uh, you will see how influenced you will be by uh, the teachings of the Apostle Paul uh, in the book of Romans. Highlighting this part, this section, many influential church leaders testify to the impact produced by the peace of the Romans in their lives. Augustine uh, was converted to Christ. Augustine uh, himself confessed, I read no more and need nothing else but the book of Romans. Uh, impact on church leaders. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Augustine of Hippo, uh, conversion and transformation, Martin Luther breakthrough, uh, and liberation, John Wesley, assurance and leadership. All of these guys, they were really impacted by the reading of the book of Romans. I would add here uh, John Calvin also. Highlighted uh, on this section, Augustine became the greatest theologian of the Western Church. Martin Luther discovered that the Righteous shall live by faith. John Wesley received assurance of salvation. He later founded the Church of Methodist or Methodist Church. So you see the impact that Romans caused historically? It's awesome. It's awesome. Something amazing. Um, expository outline by chapters. I. I took a chance to uh, section uh, the book and, and bring any kind of a, a, a outline a, a expository for each section. Sinfulness of all men, chapter 1 to chapter 3. All men are sinful, whether Gentiles or Jews. The Gentile who has ample evidence of God's existence through both creation and the inner law of the heart we we'll also be judged. Both are guilty because righteousness comes only through faith in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? <laughs> There's no other way, guys. Justification of believers in Jesus, chapter 3 from verse 21 up to chapter 5, verse 21. The expiatory 
uh, death of Jesus is the basis of justification. Faith is the means of obtaining justification, excluding human boosting to do good works, as seen in the example of Abraham. No matter how much good you think you are, or I think I am, the faith, salvation, justification comes only through the sacrifice and believing uh, uh, of the uh, in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There's no other way to be justified. There's no amount of good that we can do that will justify ourselves before God, but only uh, 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 through what Jesus Christ did. It, okay. Uh, sanctification, sanctification uh, of believers in Jesus, chapter six up to chapter eight. Uh, he addresses that. Baptism uh, represents our identification with the death and resurrection of Jesus, dying to sin and rising to righteousness, slavery to righteousness through attempting to keep the law has the same effect as slavery to sin. Okay? Paul reflects that his own slavery to the law produced guilt, sin, and condemnation. but the good news is that there is now the con no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I have I will, might be condemned if I just walk by my walk and my talk. If I don't walk by the, my faith in Jesus Christ, I will be condemned. Okay, and Paul works that perfectly. Unbelief of Israel, chapter 9 to chapter 11, he extensively discussed that the importance of Israel uh, and the Jews to come to Christ and to come to church in order to be saved. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, Christian living and conclusion, chapter 12 up to chapter 16. Consecration, ministries in the church, love with, uh, within the church, and relationship outside the church. Okay, Obedience uh, to the state, love, and waiting for the coming of Christ, chapter 14 to 15, deal with, deals with the subject of the freedom of believers regarding ceremonial and dietary, uh, dietary laws. Okay? Finally, Paul's plans to return to Rome, warnings about false teachers, greetings, and doxology, chapter 15 to 16. So Paul has this very well carved, very well structured. He draw with inspiration by the Holy Spirit. Okay, And I have here a personal application, and I hope you do your personal application as you uh, study uh, Romans. I prepared this. You have this on your study guide, and you can check it out. This I will not uh, go through this whole thing. And hope I hope you will not only read for the sake of knowledge, but I hope that you will read and allow the Holy Spirit use this whole strategic structure book with the teachings of our faith. Believe me, your life will be changed forever. God bless you. Hope you enjoy. See you next class.